Hallelujah. We well, bless the name of the Almighty God for um, giving us grace again to see today. Uh, we thank Him for His faithfulness in our lives and for giving us the grace to see the last Sunday in the month of September. In His name, we pray forever in Jesus' name. Um, on this one, we'll take back with us also. We want to um, celebrate the life of our daddy in the Lord, our Bishop David Ridepo, for clocking 70. We celebrate you, sir. We appreciate the faithfulness of God in your life, and we pray that the anointing of God in your life and upon your ministry will not run dry in Jesus' name. Congratulations, sir, and happy birthday in Jesus' name. And today, by the grace of God, we want to take a, um, a closer look at the topic here last week. And so today, we are having the part two on the message that's titled Chastises of Those Who Love God. So we had the part one last week. So today, we're taking the part two. And then in taking the part two, our focus uh, will be on a topic that stemmed out from what we discussed last week. And so our top, this topic, which is the part two of Chastises of Those Who Love God, is centered on the indicators to show if you love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Indicators to show if you and I genuinely love God with all our hearts, our soul, and our mind. And our text are from the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. Matthew 22 verse 37 and Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Matthew 6 verse 21, Matthew 22 verse 37 and Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. As our custom is of this platform, we would like to pray uh, before we proceed. Everlasting Father, we give you praise for uh, keeping us to this time. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, for keeping us to the last Sunday in the ninth month in the year. We are grateful. Lord, we simply adore in Jesus' name. Thank you for your faithfulness in life of our daddy and daddy Bishop Ogidepo for celebrating 70 years on us. We thank you for all that you have chosen to do in Christendom. We glorify in Jesus' name. We pray for those of us that are still coming behind that your grace will be sufficient for us too and that you help us all in Jesus' name. Even as we go into this message, you give us the grace to love you the way we should and your mercy will be good by of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you because you have answered for in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. So we appreciate you uh, for joining us again today. And as I pray that you'll be richly blessed uh, by the word of God that we bless during at this time in Jesus' name. Amen. So, like I said, we're having the part two of uh, the message Christalities of those who love God. And today our focus, like I said, is on indicators to show if you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all our mind. And to start with, I would like us to Remember that um, there is a Bible, there is a portion of the scriptures that help us to understand the nature of our hearts. And that's in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. I will read from the Amplified. It says, For where your treasure is, there your hearts, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers will be also. So that means that as women, wherever we put our treasure, that is where our heart will be. By the grace of God, as Christians, God desires that since we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, our heart, our desire, everything about us to be centered on Him, to be centered on fulfilling God's command, to be centered on you know loving the Lord and doing all that God wants us to and to do on earth. So by the grace of God, we trust in God that as we go into this message, we'll be able to look at those indicators that will help us to see the, the, the nature of our hearts, to genuinely assess ourselves. If we actually love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. So I pray that God will help us as we proceed this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And at the same time, I also want us to look at um, the mirror in our homes. Many of us, we have mirrors. And the reason why we stand in front of mirrors before we go out is for us to see ourselves, to see if we have come our hair, to see how uh, the dress we, or maybe the clothes we put on, how it has... Uh, it's, uh, it's fitted to our body. You know, we just check the mirror to be sure everything is fine before we, we go out. In the same vein, God expects that we, as His children, we as His children, we as His beloved, we use the Bible, the Word of God that He has given us, to check ourselves on a daily basis. I tell you, some people check in the mirrors more than two or five times in a day just because they want to be appreciated in the public. They want to feel good in the public. So God expects us as his children to be able to constantly check ourselves to see 
take ourselves to assess ourselves based on the God standards in the Word of God to see if our life, if our behavior, if our character is in line with what He has you know, given to us in the scriptures. So that's why today, by the grace of God, we want to look at these seven indicators that will help us to see if you and I genuinely love the Lord. And I pray that He gives us understanding as we go on in the name of Jesus. And so, like I said, God indeed wants you and I to be like our Lord Jesus. That is his goal. That is why he allowed Jesus to come and die and for our sins. He wants us to be like him. And so that is why it's important for you and I to check ourselves, to constantly check ourselves on a daily basis, on a regular basis, to see if we love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. So quickly, we'll look at these seven indicators that we us to see, to check, to evaluate, to know our level, to know if we, if you and I truly love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. So the seven indicators, the first one uh, that we want to talk about is how we spend our time. Brothers and sisters, one of the things that we can use to know if you love God is how you spend your time. God has given all of us 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, and of course, sometimes we have 30, 31 days in a month, and 365 days or 366 days in a year. So brothers and sisters, how do you spend the time that God has given you? Do you have time for God? I know we all, we all claim to be busy, but then, like we have said in our introduction, you know, anywhere our treasure is, that is where our heart will be. So that means that if we truly love God, we will create time for Him, even in our busy schedules. We will try to create time for Him. Do you have time to preach the gospel? Do you have time to, to go out to preach the gospel? Do you have time to have your devotions? Do you have time to even go to church on Sundays? We are not saying that our focus in this, on this platform is not about a church, so to speak, but it's about us having a genuine relationship and a better relationship with our Heavenly Father. It's about the lost souls. It's about us you know, saving the lost. So do we have time to do the lost command? Do we have time to preach the gospel? So brothers and sisters, one of uh, the key indicators to, to, to assess our love for God is us checking ourselves if we have time for the Lord. The second one is how we spend our money. Brothers and sisters, it's better for us to know that whatever we think we have today has been given to us by our Heavenly Father. The, the car, the house, the shoe, the clothes, the money in our account, whatever with the business, whatever we think we have, even beyond the money, the talent, the skills, those things that you know we use and we think that we own, it is better for us to know that they are given to us by our Heavenly Father. But then how we then know if we truly love God is how we spend, for instance, our money. Do you have time? Do you, do you, do you pay? Do you give offering? Of course, you can say that you give offering, but then what is the quality of that offering? Is, that, is the offering that you are giving to God commensurate with what He has done for you? Is it commensurate with what is in your account? Or are you just giving for giving sake? Brothers and sisters, how we spend our money is another indicator to check, to, to, to help us to know if we truly love God as we have always claimed and that we do. And then the third thing is our interest. Brothers and sisters, another thing that we can that can help us to know if we truly love God is uh, the fact that we need to look at those things that interest us. You know, if somebody belongs to the Lord, that means that the person will be interested in those things that the Lord is interested in. So brothers and sisters, one of the things that can help us to know if you truly love God is your interest. That are your interests. Are they what God loves? So you need to be able to answer that question. This thing that I'm after, this thing that I'm craving for, is it that is, is God pleased with this in himself? Is God interested in these things? And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. The, the fourth indicator that can help us to know if we truly love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, is our perception of God's work and our response. Our perception of God's work and our response. When we see the church embarking on a program, when we see the church embarking on an outreach, when we see the church, you know, doing something, you know, do, or somebody doing something for the Lord, how do we perceive it? How do we respond? You know, if there is a, if there, if there is a demand on us too, for instance, maybe the church wants us to use our car to pick someone from one place to the other, just to support the ministry at that particular time. How do we respond and to this request? Brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know 
that God wants us all to be part of his end time army. So, brothers and sisters, we must be you know, able to answer that question. How do we respond you know, to God's work? How do we respond to um, God's... Uh, 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 how do we respond? As, what's our perception to God's work? And I pray you will help us uh, to be able to respond positively in the name of Jesus. And so the fifth uh, indicator to show uh, if we truly love God is our life priorities and then our life goals. Brothers and sisters, all of us, there, if you are told to write out, if you are told to write out our life goals, you know, from our life goals, from our life, you know, uh, priorities, we'll be able to know if we have God in our plan. So, brothers and sisters, another thing that can help us uh, to know if we genuinely love God as we have already claimed to love God is our life goals. And one important question we are not to ask ourselves is that is God involved in our life goals? Do we have a place for God in that thing that we are designed to achieve? I pray the good Lord will continue to help us in Jesus' name. And then another important indicator of our love for God is our war attitude against sin. You and I know that we love, we serve a God that is holy and He wants us all to be holy. So one of the important indicators of our love for Him is our, 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 our war attitude against I call it war attitude. That means our conscious effort to stay holy. Our conscious effort by the grace of God to be holy. Our conscious efforts, you know, to be accepted with our loving Father. Our conscious efforts to maintain a cordial relationship with the Holy Spirit and with the Trinity. So this is another indicator um, of our love for Him. So, brothers and sisters, what is the how will you assess your own war attitude, your war? I mean, the, the, your, your fight against sin. I pray God will continue to help us in the name of Jesus. And it is important for us to know that there is no way we can exhaust this list, but we just have seven of them. So I'll just quickly mention and the last one and before we go this morning. And then the last one we want to talk about now is the fact that are you looking forward to meeting the Lord in life after now? Brothers and sisters, you are one of the indicator to show if you truly love God is uh, uh, us looking forward to meeting the Lord after now. Brothers and sisters, you know, if you love something, for instance, if you have your spouse or your parents outside the country, or maybe you have left home for a long while, you know, if, because you love them, you'll be, you know, looking forward to that time where you'll be able to see them again. Brothers and sisters, one of the key indicators of our love for God is our uh, preparation to meet the Lord, our preparation to see the Lord, our preparation to see this Jesus that we are talking about, to see the Almighty God in His awesomeness, that's in eternity. So, brothers and sisters, one of the key indicators of our love for God is our preparation to see Him after now. I pray that the good Lord will help us to be able to look at these seven indicators we'll talk about today, to assess our love for God, and then to make necessary correction as deem fit in Jesus' name. Amen. So, in conclusion, it's important for you and I to know that we, it's important for you and I to raise our love for God. And so the question is, how out of, let's say out of 10, how will you rate your love for God? Will it be 4 over 10, 7 over 10, 10 over 10, or probably 0 over 10? I think God will help us uh, to be able to assess ourselves genuinely, to see where we stand, and then to make necessary correction or necessary um, uh, modification of our life priorities so that we can measure up to the desired standard of God. I pray you continue to help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. And before we go today, we'd like to give room for those that are yet to accept the Lord Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior. We want you to know that Jesus came so that you can be saved. And then the essence of this platform, Second Pastor us, is just because of you, so that you can get to know that God loves you, so that you can get to know that Jesus wants you on his side, is can get to know that there is a place after now which is called heaven where we have our heavenly father where we have our lord jesus christ where the holy spirit wants to help you from this earth to be in and that is why i want to encourage you to please accept jesus as your lord and personal savior today if i were to do that can you just repeat this after me? Just lord jesus i thank you for loving me thank you for coming to die for me today i find that i'm a sinner forgive me of my sins i accept you now as my Lord and personal Savior. On the last day, give me the grace to reign with you in eternity and please write my name in the book of life. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for answering my prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. 
So, brothers and sisters, if you have made that prayer with us, I want to congratulate you for making the best decision anybody can ever make. I want to know that Jesus loves you and he has written your name on the book of life. I want to encourage you to please find a Bible living church around you, join them, and let the pastor of the church know that they are a new convert so that they can support you uh, in this Christian race. At the same time, if um, you are dedicating your life to Lord Jesus, I want you to genuinely go back to God, go back to your church, go back to the people of God that can help you, and please get all the support that you need to remain in this faith. And the truth of the matter is the fact that our Jesus will definitely come back again. Please, let's get ourselves ready. And the good Lord will continue to help us all in Jesus' name. So before we close finally, we would like to just um, have our prayer. So our prayer today is, our dear Heavenly Father, please help us to love you with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind, in the name of Jesus. Can we pray in Jesus' name? Father, we pray. Thank you for your word. Father, we have assessed ourselves and we see the need for you to help us. And so, Father, we pray that you will indeed help us, help us to love you with all our hearts, with all our soul, and with all our mind. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And then, at the same time, I also want to intercede for those that um, uh, our, testimony, our testimony prayer today will be, let's say, Father, please deliver saints who are expressing persecutions because of their faith and stand for you. Father, please deliver saints who are experiencing persecutions because of their faith and stand for you. Father, we join our hands with other believers to pray for saints who are being persecuted because of their love for you, because of their stand for you. We pray, O oh God, that your hand of deliverance, that your right hand, Father, will be seen in their lives. In their circumstances, you will deliver them. You, you, you help them. You will stand with them. Just like you deliver the three Hebrew men, Father, young men, you will deliver these ones. In the name of Jesus, you that deliver Daniel from the lion's den, we pray for as many Christians that have been persecuted at this time, that Lord Jesus will come through for them, will help them, and deliver them in Jesus' name. Thank you because you have answered in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we want to appreciate God for giving us the opportunity to fellowship again today. It's a prayer as I believe that you have been blessed. And so please, like we said, today we have had the part two of the message um, on, on us. Um, on, on the, uh, we have, on the, so we have had the part two of the message last week on the of those uh, who love God. And so today our focus is how on the indicators, some indicators of how we can know if we truly love God with our spirit, with our heart, with our soul, and then with our mind. So by the grace of God, next week, a Sunday, when the Lord tires and is coming, we will be having the third um, part of this message on catharsis of those who love God. Until then, we want to wish us all um, God's blessing, God's grace, and God's mercies in all our ways, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Happy Sunday, and see you next week, when the Lord tires and is coming, in Jesus' name. God bless you.